Hi there. Welcome to Community Meditation. Thanks for being here tonight with me. My name is Jana Genova. I'm a meditation teacher in Southern California. And Community Meditation is a weekly live streamed meditation gathering. It's free. It's really easy to join us. If you're watching this as the recording, um, the live stream adds another element. During the live stream, you're able to connect with my energy as well as the energy of the other meditators who are with us. Our goal is to make community meditation the largest weekly gathering of meditators in the world. So hopefully you can join us live every Wednesday from 6 until 6.30 p.m. Pacific. The meditations are open to meditators of all levels, beginners, people with a great deal of experience. Um, we'll all find benefit in these practices. So why don't we begin the way that we should begin every meditation practice? And that's connecting with our motivation for being here this evening. And throughout tonight's meditation and our talk, if at any point you're feeling kind of insecure about what's going on, you're not sure if you're doing it correctly, then just reconnect with this motivation that I'm going to share with you right at the start. And what we're doing is we're connecting with the part of ourselves that has kind of a knowing, a connection to the bigger picture. And at first, we don't know the full story, but we have this sense, a resonance with the practices. And we trust that that resonance is guiding us someplace. And we call this our bodhicitta motivation. It's a, a knowing that on some level, what we're doing here tonight goes beyond self-help. What we're doing here tonight is about awakening something within us. Once we've awakened that within ourselves, we then can help to awaken others. And this, what are we awakening ourselves to? We're awakening ourselves to our innate goodness. It's not that it's not there or we need to do something to get to that point. It's that it's covered up right now with the obscurations of our mind. Our life experiences are limiting our view of the deeper reality, which is this innate goodness in ourselves and in all beings. And once we can see this for ourselves and we stabilize in this, then we automatically see it in others. And so we have this trust that engaging in these practices is guiding us to awakening this awareness within ourselves and we do it for the benefit of all beings. So with palms resting on your knees, you can close your eyes or rest the gaze downward. Let's take a few moments to feel the rise and fall of our bodies with each breath. mentally and physically coming onto the cushion, so to speak. Perhaps you're in a chair, but coming into this place. And as you move from the thinking mind into the feeling body, riding the rise and fall of your body with each breath. Allow this inner knowing to resonate. In many ways, it's still a mystery. It's a bit unclear how it works but we allow this inner knowing to resonate. And we have the sincere intention that our gathering here this evening benefits not only us as individuals, but the entire world, all beings across space and time
And with this as our motivation for gathering here this evening, our intention, our fuel to remain engaged in the practices. Let's begin. Some of you join us every week and maybe you've been following along with Johnny and how he's doing. He's doing much better today than um, he has been the past couple of weeks. So he's with us again. He wanted to be here. As soon as he saw me setting up, he came right over to his spot. He's working on a bone, which you might hear. Um, and last week we talked about, last week and the week before, we talked about the intersection of helping others and self-care and how to kind of find balance and manage that intersection. And I explained an approach that probably seemed a bit surprising. And the approach is to practice receiving and that once we can receive, we then sort of radiate a kind of care that is sustainable, it's tireless, and is very real. The kind of care that we've been engaging in in the past, most of us, is one that we may try, try, try so hard, putting so much effort into providing for and helping others. All of this effort leaves us depleted, and it also, isn't fully communicated with the person who we intend to receive this care. But when we can find this, this other way that is by way of receiving, then what we radiate is so pure, it's so true that the recipients sense it on some level. It's so pure, it is without all of the tension that comes with trying really hard. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about the receiving aspect of the practices and how we can deepen within this mode of receiving. And the benefactors practice, which we did last week and the week before, and if you're watching this recording, I will um, I'll flash a link for you to connect to the previous teachings that I'm speaking of. The benefactors practice, if you've been doing it, you've noticed probably that and recalling that benefactor moment, while in meditation, you likely receive that moment more fully than you did when it actually happened, yet not as fully as you, you could. There's still something restricting you from fully opening to this moment of deep care and concern, the wish for your well-being, happiness and joy, even the belief in your innate goodness that this benefactor sees in you. I want to talk about that resistance and how to work through that resistance. We need to do it in a really gentle way, which is why we have to do these practices regularly, every day if you can. We don't get it the first time we try, and we don't get it through an intellectual understanding of kind of the mechanics of the practices. Instead, this ability arises when we can relax into the receiving. So if I were to tell you right now, just receive more fully, that's the key. That's how you get to this kind of um, care for self and others that is tireless. Then of course questions are going to arise, but how? I feel this resistance or we might have a sense that, oh yes, I'm doing it fully. And that's a kind of a, a false understanding of what's happening. It needs to be a really gentle approach to allow for the relaxing instead of a tightening up and trying hard to find this ability to receive. And a practice that's been so helpful for me in easing into that relaxing is one that guides us through what arises as we're recalling this moment and practicing the receiving. Thoughts and feelings will arise as we engage in the, med in the benefactor's meditation. 
And instead of some practices guide us to like notice and release or simply observe the feelings and maybe like hope that they're going to go away in some time. Or I heard someone recently um, giving instruction that to me sounded like battling with the mind in a way, like not allowing the mind to take control, not allowing those thoughts to happen. Those kinds of practices don't work so well for me. What works better for me is if I interact with the whatever arises, the thought or the feeling. And while interacting, we maintain a kind of awareness so that if we become an, um, engrossed in or fascinated by the story or the feeling itself, then we have this insight, we have this awareness, and we then make the choice to move our awareness, our attention to another feeling that might be present. And so what we do when the thoughts and feelings arise, the way that we can healthfully interact with these feelings without becoming them or becoming enmeshed in them is to shake hands with the feeling. And it, at first it sounds really kind of silly and like, oh, this couldn't actually be what helps me. It's the attitude that shaking hands evokes that is most important. So if we think about how we are when we shake hands with a stranger, think about that for a moment. What are you like? How are you being when you are introduced to a stranger? Someone who you want to like, someone who you want to like you back. You want this person to feel comfortable, welcome, safe. You're hoping perhaps that something will come of this introduction, something that's mutually beneficial. Or maybe you're curious about this person, depending on the circumstances. Hi, buddy. Yeah. So our attitude when we shake hands with someone, when we really explore this, is one that is very um, hospitable, welcoming, open. We allow space for the person to be themselves. Right? Like when we go and we meet someone and we shake hands with them, we don't have an expectation of what their name might be. We're totally open to whatever they might say. We have a kindness about us that we hope is communicated through our eyes or our body language, the way in which we shake hands with someone. We call this an attitude of hospitality. And we, if we can uh, evoke this feeling when interacting with feelings that arise in the meditation, this is a great way to interact with the feelings. Rather than trying to stop them or push them away, we are going to be hospitable towards whatever comes up. This is totally different than other types of instruction for meditation, right? Usually the instruction is something like, when the thought comes, then you exit out and you put it in the trash or, um, or some other things I've heard. You ignore it, you focus on something else. Not this time around. I want you to open your awareness to whatever is occurring in your body and mind at this time and go right up to those feelings and thoughts and with a kindness, an attitude of hospitality, imagine that you are shaking hands with that feeling. And then looking around to see what other feelings might be present in the same way that you would look around if you were hosting a dinner party and you wanted to be sure that you greeted every guest at that party. So we're going to try it right now. We're not going to do any special breathing we're not going to do anything to like relax the body. We want to work with what's happening right now. Okay. So if you'd like, rest the gaze downward. Perhaps palms are resting down on your knees. And as you breathe naturally, Notice what feelings are happening for you right now.
perhaps some subtle feelings of anxiety. Maybe that feeling of being a little bit rushed, left over from your day. Maybe some feelings of satisfaction. You made it here tonight to meditation. Go ahead and shake hands with each of the feelings that you notice. Allowing any feelings beneath those feelings to reveal themselves. Greeting all feelings with the same kind of compassionate presence. allowing any and all feelings to arise. If you find yourself following the story or the reason for a feeling, simply look around and see what other feelings might be present, politely excusing yourself from the previous feeling without asking it to go away. Just maintaining an attitude of hospitality and openness creating space for all feelings. Taking a break, noticing what you noticed, maybe in your mind, listing three to five of the feelings that you noticed. And if you didn't feel anything, we can call this numbness. And we would greet the numbness 
in the same way with a handshake. Interacting with our feelings in this way allows for an acceptance of our being, of our circumstances. This kind of acceptance I've noticed for myself at first, I resisted. I felt that this kind of acceptance was like losing, giving up, falling over. You know, but when we choose to interact with our feelings with kindness, when we choose to be hospitable toward our feelings, there's a power in that choice. I'm choosing to greet this feeling. I'm choosing to allow this feeling. The feelings that persist, we can call these beautiful monsters the ones that appear every time we sit for handshake practice. These beautiful monsters, rather than trying to make them go away or becoming worried that they're taking over our meditation, let's allow them to be in the meditation with us, kind of along for the ride. Recognizing that these are perhaps the wounded parts of ourselves Maybe we see them as the wounded monsters and instead of being cruel to them or making them go away, we allow them to be. We allow them to be with us as we greet the other feelings. And perhaps this allows for some healing of those beautiful monsters. This is a space of allowing, allowing all parts of you. We aren't trying to achieve certain feelings or achieve a certain a certain state what we are doing is allowing allowing so much that the allowing is just natural at first the allowing takes effort we have to remind ourselves to allow rather than to resist but in time this allowing becomes kind of a natural state and then we are able to drop an effort into the allowing allowing all things to be. We can see that if we utilize handshake practice during the challenging moments in our benefactor's practice, then we can deepen into the benefactor's practice, right? And when I say feelings, thoughts and feelings, these are emotions, but also physical sensations Yay. that so often arise when we're sitting in practice, especially if we're new meditators. The physical body becomes uncomfortable and we sort of aren't sure what to do with it. So we end up giving up. We think, oh, this means I can't meditate because I'm so agitated, I'm so tight, I'm so stiff. When you're feeling tight or stiff or agitated, shake hands with those physical feelings in the same way that you would shake hands with the emotions and thoughts that arise using this handshake practice for all of those experiences. Another experience that often comes up in a meditation practice is the physical body becoming uncomfortable, like very itchy or feeling like you need to sneeze or cough. Because you sneeze or cough doesn't mean that you've broken out of the meditation. Shake hands with the experience as well as all of the feelings around that. The feelings of, oh, I blew it, or I'm a failure, or I don't know what to do now. Shake hands with each of those feelings. So the handshake practice is something that we can be doing throughout the benefactor's meditation as anything arises. Do you see how there's kind of like this flow between the two? Let's practice handshake practice a little bit more. And this time, let's recall a difficult feeling. Because the good feelings, those are pretty easy to, to allow in our body. We've been told that it's good to have positive feelings, right? So we're all kind of pretty used to having those experiences and allowing them. We've also been told that we should not have 
negative feelings. That negative feelings are like the worst thing that we could allow in our lives because it will attract more or we will become that. Let's see if that's actually true. For the next few minutes, I want you to recall a difficult um, situation in your life at this time, something that's really present for you. So thinking of the circumstances that um, elicit this feeling, let's say it's um, frustration at work, maybe with a particular coworker, bringing that to mind, bringing to mind a difficult conversation or encounter with this coworker, okay? So with eyes soft, gaze downward. We're going to do it for less than five minutes, actually just two minutes. And whatever is on the top of your mind is probably best for this meditation. What's really irking you right now? Something about yourself or a challenging relationship? bringing to mind a moment when these feelings were really intense. And allowing these feelings to occur in your body. Noticing the tightness in your throat chest or stomach, shaking hands with this physical sensation of tightness. Maybe you feel the heat of anger in your heart. Shaking hands with this feeling Beneath that, perhaps there is the heaviness of sadness. The fear of not being able to change a situation. Shake hands with all of these feelings. Without trying to change them or make them go away instead welcoming them. If the tightness intensifies, welcome it even more. See if you can relax any gripping or holding on in your stomach. Shaking hands with the feelings that are released. lifting the gaze. Noticing how you feel. What happened to those feelings when you allowed them?
And let's all commit to practicing this throughout the week and seeing what happens. We did this for such brief intervals, just two minutes, five minutes, whenever you find time and if possible in those really heated moments, see if you can engage handshake practice. Try it out in your meditation if you're doing the benefactors practice. When feelings arise, perhaps feelings of resistance or the mind wanders, then switch over to handshake practice and then come back into the benefactors practice, finding a flow between the two. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight and with all of the other meditators. Also, thank you for all of your emails and words of encouragement. It's so um, fulfilling to hear from you that community meditation is making an impact in your life and that you look forward to joining me. So um, all of your messages are greatly appreciated. Johnny appreciates it too. Before we go, let's dedicate the merit that we've generated. So with hands um, in prayer at your heart or on your knees, wherever you're comfortable, connect with this idea that we've generated merit with our efforts and let's practice generosity. Let's give this merit away to all other beings. Appreciating that at some point someone has done this for you and now this is your chance to do this for another person, for other beings. And with the sound of the bell, let's feel our merit resonate to all beings. Good night.